and wind and wave combined to threaten the lives of those who dared to travel upon the seas, the men of the United States Life Saving Service and Coast Guard left the comfort of their sturdy stations and entered into the battle. With little more than their wooden boats, cork-filled life jackets, oil skin foul with the gear, and the tools you see here today, they let their strength, bravery, and most importantly, training lead the way. This is the Lyle Gun. It was designed and built in 1874 by an Army Ordnance Specialist, Lieutenant David A. Lyle. It was never intended as a weapon of warfare. It was designed and built specifically for the purpose of life safety. It has an effective range of about 800 yards on an 8-ounce charge of black powder. Today we'll be firing about 200 yards on an ounce and a quarter charge. When I load the gun, which I will not do right now, I give the command, the charge is being introduced to the gun. I then ram the charge home and turn the gun over to surfer number one. This is the projectile used in the Lyle gun. It was called a shot. It was made from precision machine steel and weighs approximately 18 pounds. Its purpose was to carry the first line of rescue from the surfing on the beach to the survivors on the shipwreck. For the purpose of the beach apparatus drill, the relax landing station had a pole similar to the one you see here. It was called the wreck pole to simulate the ship's mast. Surfing number two. This is the shot line box. It was used for the storage and transportation of shot line. Its purpose was to keep the shot line from getting tangled up, which was accomplished by arranging the line on a certain pattern on the pegs called faking. When the shot line box is ready for use, it is flipped upside down. The line falls off the pegs into the lid of the box, keeping its formation. Prior to attaching the shot line to the shot, I'll wet a fathom of line and attach with three simple half hitches. carefully loaded into the bore of the Lyle gun. The elevation having already been determined, the gun is then sighted making due allowance for the wind using three simple commands, left, right, and well. I then prime the gun with a 32 caliber priming cartridge which sits in the vent of the gun. Ran on a spring-loaded firing mechanism, which is essentially a firing pin, spring-loaded like a center punch with a cocking piece that goes in, which the lanyard will attach. I thread that one over top of the primer. I attach the lanyard. I give the command ready. When I give the command ready, I want everybody to cover your ears. I'm getting ready to fire the gun. It is kind of loud. For those who are taking pictures or videos, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> Surfing number three. the whip, pulley, pull one way, it goes the other, used between the ship and the shore, kind of like the grandmother's clothesline. It would send this out, which is the tally board, it's written in English and in French, which was the national or the international shipping language. This is the hawser, this is the lifeline of the drill. the fall. It's a four to one ratio block and tackle, giving five men the power of 20. All the lines you see out here today are made of manila, a natural fiber from the Philippines. Number five. This is the sand anchor. This will give us a secure anchor point on the beach so a line can be pulled taut to the shipwreck. The sand anchor is ready by trenching an X two and a half feet deep. The sand anchor is open, buried upon its flat. The pennant is connected to the inner block of the fall and is then ready for service. You'll note some of our equipment is color coded. Blue to the ocean, white to the beach. Surf moon number six.
We're without surfer number six today, so surfer number two will stand in for you. This is the crash pole. It is used to elevate the hawser and the surf. To surfer number seven. This is the breeches buoy. Essentially a pair of shorts sewn into a life ring attached to the hawser by means of these sister hooks. We used to carry the victims back to shore. Great. This is the cart. It's arguably the most important piece of equipment out here because it carries all this other equipment that you see here out to the area of service. Fully loaded, it weighs almost a half a ton. It's got four foot diameter wheels wrapped in steel, pushed by two, pulled by four, steered by two surfmen. They had to be pulled up to three and a half miles in either direction as the surf state as the stations were parked about seven miles apart. Uh, since there is no surfman number nine, that concludes our explanation of equipment. <laughs> Close the beach cart. Station keeper has general supervision, selects place to bear the sand anchor in position for gun. Places the gun in position, provides cartridge primers and lanyard, loads the sights the gun and determines the elevation, pricks the cartridge, primes and fires the gun, signals wreck to haul off whip, lights hawser to surf, bends whip around neck of buoy block, bends buoy rider to whip, and raises the center of the crop pole. Surfing number one. Surfing number one. Assist keeper to place gun in position. Provide shot for number two to bend shot line to. Insert shot in the bore. The train's gun. Bend shot line on the whip. Attends left part of the whip. Tip on lee side, bends with the hosel. Until it reaches the block, our keeper bends on whip, then snaps the block on hosel. Nines fall and left leg of crush ball. Serve. Surfer number two. Surfer number two. Place the shot line box in position. Bend shot line to shot. Train's gun. Makes half hitch with shot line on the tail of whip. Attends right part of whip. If on lee side, bends with the hawser, holds for each of the block, will keep a bends on whip, snaps block on hawser, man's ball, right leg of crotch pole, sir. Surfer number three. Surfer number three. Place shot line, place shot line box in position. Move whip, place on the other side. Move hawser, place on the lee side. Man the ball, man the crotch, shifting man on whip, sir. Surfer number four. 
Server number four. Unload buoys and cart. Place buoy hauls in cross position. Stretch tackle. Hook inner block to sand anchor pennant. All width and reels will be in hauled off to the wreck. And if on lee side, you can stand the hauls will be hauled off. Hook outer block to tackle. Sand ball and regular crotch. Server number five. Unload buoys and cart. Place buoy hauls in cross Symphony number five, the system bearing sand anchor. Man weather part of whip when hauling off hauser. Haul in slack of hauser. Hook ender block the sand anchor pennant. Man in belay fall. I'm shifting man on whip. Sir. Surfing number seven. Surfing number seven. In drill, man's rack pole. In service, unload shovels and pick. The system bearing sand anchor. Man weather part of whip while hauling off hauser. Haul in slack of hauser. Shifting man on whip, sir. Surfing number eight. Surfing number eight, and drill goes to wreck pole. In service, unload pick and shovel assistant bearing sand anchor. Man's weather side of whip while hauling on hauser, hauls in slack on hauser. Man's falling center of crotch is shifting man on whip, sir. Man the beach cart.
Come up, talk to the guys, ask questions, check the equipment out up a little closer, lend a helping hand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you.